Hi. What's up? How are you? You doing, doing all right? All right. I'm glad to hear that, actually. I'm really glad to hear that. Uh, our patrons this month voted for us to play a game from developer Vertical Reach. And we obliged. And we will be playing Avia Attorney, which I hope you are all looking forward to because I know I am. I certainly am. This, this one's been on our radar for a while and it was just kind of waiting for a moment for us to get to it. Uh, up front, just, so from a pro- just a programming note for this one, we're going to do one episode of this right now because it, to get it in before the end of the month, uh, since that's what our patrons wanted. We're going to put it on hold for a little bit after that just to get the last two or three episodes of Misericord done. And then we'll come back and play through Avia Attorney proper after that. So we're gonna, this is like a little teaser to, to, to whet your appetite for the rest of the game. How's that sound? Does that all right? Sound like an accurate description? Sounds good. All I'm right. hoping. I'm hoping this will be like the midpoint between Hotful Boyfriends and Phoenix Wright, two series we have played and greatly enjoyed. True. Um, what interests me most about this is that I don't have the name in front of me, but like the the artwork for this is all pulled from a period appropriate caricaturist that's cool yeah uh i again i don't have the name in front of me but if you look it up it's like the first thing they say about the game which is super cool and also know it takes place in paris and we can't do french accents for shit <laughs> which is actually kind of like it's weird that i can't do that considering where i grew up but yeah it is what it is start this i is my mouse gonna be the little that's side fine. to side widget the entire time. That's fine. That's that's great. I'm just gonna move it off the screen here. Nah. January first, eighteen forty eight. The Chateau of Crinaire of Baron Rog- Roguel. Yep. Oh, oh shit. Sh- oh no. Is that Monsieur Grenvy? Oh mon dieu. Dame Carteline, what have you done? Act one, a cat with claws. All right, so I'm already seeing some misapprehensions that I had. Yeah? What misapprehensions? So I thought they'd all be birds. They're, they're all animals. Okay. Yeah, they're all animals. Okay. It, it's like, it's not, it's like halfway on the furry scale where you got anthropomorphized animals, but like. Yes, yeah, so this is this is just a general anthro game rather than a feathery game specifically. Okay. I mean, Huddleful Boyfriend isn't even a feathery game is the thing. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, I'm very sure. Because there's just at least one regular ass human in it. Who you know. dates birds. <laughs> okay, okay, fine. Oh, Sparrowson. I believe this is to be our our uh, attorney, after a fact here. Would hmm. you like to be... In line with our ace attorney games, would you like to be Sparrowson, or would you like me to be Sparrowson? I'll give it a shot. Okay. It's midday already. Where on earth is that feather head? Can I not use my gauntlet for this? I can't use my gauntlet for this? I'm so sad. Oh, the mouse went back to normal. Oh, hey, it's back. Well, well, well. Look who finally decided to get up. Haven't you heard what they say about the early bird, Falcon? Ugh, too early for worms. Pass the Cabernet Sauvignon. There'll be time for that later. We've got some business to handle first. Business? A letter arrived while you were sleeping. I haven't opened it yet. It's probably just more junk mail. Go ahead, Sparrowson. You have the you may have the honors. Alright. Mm-mm. Dear Monsieur Falcon. <laughs> I am writing to you today because my daughter, Dame Caterline, has been arrested for a crime she did not commit. She is being held at La Conciergerie prison on the charge of murder, no less. Her trial is in three days' time. I would be greatly in your debt if you would offer her your legal aid. Yours sincerely, Seigneur Pour Trois de Miao of the de Miao Estate. Well, this is quite something. I know, your first serious client in months. Not just that, the de Miao Estate is well known for its exuberant wealth. If we cannot do much for Dame Caroline, his lordship will st- still reward us handsomely for our efforts. 
Uh, wow. So I suppose you intend on defending Dame Caroline in court. You don't have to pronounce it terribly because I am. It's fine. <laughs> Caterline? Uh, Caterline? Cater- I don't know. I, I don't, Caterline? Yeah, maybe. Cater- uh, feel free to absolutely just Caterline? go wild in the comments making fun of our inability to pronounce things with a French accent. Uh, to be fair, the state that we live in is... Uh, Famous for naming everything with French names and then choosing not to pronounce any of the letters in the French way. I know. It's great. It's fucking so, great. Oh, man. Anyway. Uh, so I only know what French looks like, not what it sounds like. That's, that's fair. That's fair. Are we defending Dame Caterline? Sure. Fuck it. Of course. It would be foolish to let such a good opportunity slip through our feathers. Grab your coats, Bowson. We're going to go find our kitty client at La Concierge. Conciergerie? Excellent. My derriere was getting tired from all this sitting around. Oh, but I better file away Seigneur de Miao's letter first. One moment, Falcon. This is going to be terrible, you know that, right? This is going to be a trade wreck. Pour toi's letter. Has been added to your evidence folder. You may access the evidence folder at any time by clicking the suitcase symbol. Awesome, we got evidence. Ah, nearly forgot my wallet. Wouldn't I lose that, now would I? Again, I recall you losing it at the New Year's party and at Christmas. Yes, all right. No need to make a list. Falcone has picked up his wallet. 20 francs. Wait, we have money? Oh, I thought it was going to be like, hey, you want to see my badge? Hey, you want to <laughs> see my badge? Hey, you want to see my badge? Actually, you know what? Let's look at this. Signor Portois de Mio has requested legal aid for his daughter, Cataline. She's being held at the conciergerie. Yeah, there is an actual extra one in there. Yeah, there is an actual I I, I don't know why I... Huh. Weird. Cool. There is... There's what? I thought it was just concierge, but no, you're, there was the extra... There was the extra syllable in it. Mm. You can see how much money he's carrying at any time by clicking on the wallet symbol. Let's make a move. So do we have like a do we have like a Holmes and Watson scenario going on then? I'm getting more of a Falcon Holmes and, and Watson Sparrowson? vibe than I'm getting a um like Nick and Maya vibe. Yeah. I'm cool with that. I'm fine with I'm fine with being the Watson. Would you like to be the Holmes? No, nah, I'm fine okay, with the being the Watson. All right, all right. <laughs> Oh, welcome to the map screen, everyone. From here, you can travel to any listed area by clicking on a location name or a location node. Areas marked with a clock symbol take a whole day to visit. Areas with no symbol can be visited freely. Okay, so so time is measured in, like, day or you can just go here. So day stuff will advance. Got, got it. Okay. Uh... A sign on the door reads, The aviary attorney offices. No case is too big or or too small. No junk mail. Can we go back? Yeah, let's go back to the office. Immediately head back. Forgot something. Falco, why are we back in your office? We have a case to solve. I was just procrastinating. Well, stop it. We need to get back to helping Dame Caterline. All right, all right, I'm ready. Let's go. Can't you tell I'm ready through my thick French accent? What happens if we go back again? Is it going to be the same or different? Okay, it's the same. All right. It was worth a shot. <laughs> Falcone and Sparrowson step into the stone-cold foyer of the conciergerie prison. Solemn-faced guards and visitors linger beneath the medieval archways. Oh, the conciergerie. They say this is the finest prison in the old France. The outer walls are impenetrable, the cells are spotless, the guards are well-mannered. What do you want? Ah, good day, monsieur. I'm here to say Dame Carterline de Miao. I am due to represent her in court. Oh, you're her lawyer, huh? Fine, fine, follow me. Uh, Well, what are you waiting for? Keep up. Well, you went off the other side of the screen. Can't exactly follow you. Can only go by doing that. Ha! Huh. My papa hasn't forgotten about me, has he? Dame Cotterline de Miao, I presume. You've arrived! The fantastic lawyer, Monsieur Falcone, and his petite assistant, Sparrowson. Milady is knowledgeable. 
Don't, don't, don't talk like that, Sparrowson. Sorry. Actually, you know what? I'm leaning in now. He's going to pronounce everything with a terrible American accent. <laughs> Do it. My papa told me that he would only hire the best lawyers in town. Well, I'm flattered. But they weren't available at such short notice, so he hired the first people in the address directory. Oh. Uh, you see, Falcone, I told you that listing under aviary attorney would pay off. Well, let's get down to business. Dame Caterline. 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 Would you fill us in on some details? Your father's letter was a little brief. I can do my best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Found it. Found it. That's what we're going with. What is it you want? <laughs> if I can't do a French accent, I'm going to at least be extra. <laughs> what is it you wanted to know? What happened? What happened on the night of the murder? What exactly happened on the night of the murder? Oh, well, let me think. I It was a Friday evening. Me and my papa had arrived at the Chateau Crenier, the home of the great Baron Rogr... Rorguel? Rogil? Rogil? I'm... Rorgul? Rorg... Got... Rogel? Yeah. My papa spent all evening talking with Monsieur Grunwy and the Baron about... Uh... Business... Transactions. Business stuff? Well, the three of them own a railway company together. So all through dinner they were talking about company shares and investments, but I didn't really understand most of it. Hold on, who was also there? It was... Oh, do we have a history button? No, we don't. it was... Or whatever. That's the name of the guy whose manner it was, and then... Yeah. Sorry, man. I took a what with your what? A camera. It's a very newfangled gadget. A tiny bug sticks in a box with a tiny paintbrush and paints your picture very fast. <laughs> in ten minutes, poof, you have a perfect picture. Wow, technology is amazing. I don't think the lady's explanation is quite right there, Sparrison. Pshaw, let me believe. Still, the camera sounds like a very special device. I'll make a note of it. Camera has been added to your evidence folder. Please continue, Dame Catiline. Now that you're doing, like, the detective is American and has a southern accent, I almost want to prod you to lean in and be slower and be like, like, like Cajun and like it's, it's, it's knives out or glass onion now. I haven't seen either. Neither have I, but I know that the guy (laughs) has that voice. (laughs) Oh man. We got to do, we have to do like a watch party on those where we try to solve it as we're watching. So that way we can pause and move back and forth and stuff. That'd be fun. Yeah. Put that one away for later. So after we had the photograph, I went to the gardens to get some air. And that's when I found the body of Monsieur Granvi. Gran Granvi? Gran Grenvi? Granvi. 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 He was all <laughs> ripped open. A housemaid saw me standing over the froggy Monsieur and called for help, and then the police arrived. Before I could say anything, I ended up here. It was such a blur. Oh, it must have been terrifying. It wasn't so bad. My papa taught me how to be a brave cat. Was there something else you wanted to ask Monsieur Falcon? Who was there? Dame Catalan, who attended the banquet that... So she walked out and just saw a body. Yep. And... So she says. So she says. Well, there was me and my papa. My dearest maman couldn't make it, though. And then there was Baron Rogiel, who hosted the dinner, and his housemaid, Colleen, I think she was called. Of course, it was Monsieur Granvi, and... Well, you... Until, you know, he died... And then there was Monsieur Robito di Robinho, the man with the camera, but he was only there for a little while. That is a lot of dramatis personae to keep track. <laughs> mm. I think that was all. Was there anything else you want to ask? Did you see anything you see suspicious? suspicious? Dame Caroline, did you see anything suspicious that evening? Suspicious? <laughs> 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 well, like, uh, maybe a bad guy lurking in the shadows, or like a bloody murder weapon, or... Monsieur Falcon, I do believe you're looking for an easy answer. <laughs> you got my friend. I did not see anything, I'm afraid. The evening was fairly normal. The food was delicious. The conversation was boring. It was all very ordinary until the incident. I see. Wait. Falcon, you missed something of huge importance. I, I, I did. 
Dame Katerlin, you said the food was delicious, but you didn't say what food it was. You and your damn stomach. Oh, let me see. We had poached red herring to start, garnished with gar- gar- garnished. Garnished with garlic butter. Go on. And then a marbled steak served perfect bloody rare. Glorious. Falcon, write this down. What? This can't possibly be relevant to the case. Write it all down, please. For me. Fine, fine. The red herring. And the bloody rare steak. This is a red herring. <laughs> Dame Caroline ate a bloody rare steak at the banquet. Okay. I love that the red herring is a red herring. I hope. Well, who knows? Probably, yeah. Sparrison, remind me not to let you talk to clients on an empty stomach. Come to think of it, I did find a little strange that we weren't given any cutlery. No cutlery, not even for the steak. No, you'd think it with a great baron of Chateau Crenier would have gorgeous silverware, but there was none to be seen. Well, that is a little peculiar. Was there anything else you wanted to know, Monsieur Falcon? No, oh, I think that'll be all. So, what's the plan now, Falcon? I yes, see we have two tasks. We're at Chateau Crenier and try to see the scene of the murder for ourselves. And we should try to track down the supposed photographer, Monsieur Robito de Robinho. Robinio. Robinio? Robinio. Two days for two tasks. Seems doable. Should get ahead back and have some rest first. We have a lot of work ahead of us. Wait, Monsieur Falcon. Before you go, you do believe my story, don't you? Hmm. That's an interesting question. We believe our story? I don't know. We don't have a magic rock that tells us when people are lying. <laughs> I guess if we want to take the Nick route on this one, we got to believe in our clients because yeah. that's our job, right? No one else will fight for them. Yeah. And I guess, like, if if we're really playing an attorney, right? Not not a detective, but an attorney. An attorney's job is to give the client the best defense they can. Yep. I don't know if that necessarily means believing in them, but it seems like a good place to start. Sure. Of course, Dame Catalan, it's our duty as lawyers. And as gentlemen. Have faith in your testimony. You can trust us. Oh, thank you. Thank you both. Dame Catalan, Monsieur Grandoui, Baron Roger. These names are all getting a bit confusing. Oh, you got they? something in your throat, buddy. You all right? <laughs> Not particularly. Well, it is for me. I'm going to start compiling a Facebook so that I can keep track of who everyone is. Thank you! A what? A Facebook. It's a collection of people's names, pictures, and descriptions in one easy-to-carry catalog. Think I understand? The name could use a little work, though. All right, a Facebook. All right, so this will get us... Okay, this is what I was hoping for. Why is the, the jailkeeper there? <laughs> All right. Why not? J.J. Falcone. The aviary attorney himself. Oh, Sparrison. Falcone, suave and courageous lackey. What a handsome fellow. Pertoire de Miao. The wealthy father of Dame Caterline. Pertoire hired us to defend Dame Caterline in court. Quark. An ill or jailkeeper. Seems to feel disgust for criminals and for animals in general. That feels rough because mm -hmm. you're all animals. Caterline de Miao. The elegant bourgeois daughter of Signor Pertoire de Miao. She has been accused of murdering Monsieur Gronwy. Gronwy, the froggy businessman who was found murdered at a Chateau Crenier. A, a colleague of Pertoire and Rogil. Rogil. God, this is going to be a bloodbath. <laughs> <laughs> Pronunciation wise, uh, we will do our best. At least I know, like, if we got to go for it like we did with Bataille, it won't fuck us up this time. Like, if we go for the overly French one, it'll probably be closer. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's not... <laughs> Just remember, the R's go... Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm led to believe this is important. Oh, that's a lot of faces in the Facebook. Hopefully that's not all for one case. <laughs> Sparrowson, where did you get these faces? <laughs> Sparrowson. 
did you uh, collect these faces or did you uh, collect these faces? <laughs> you can access a list of people you've met at any time by clicking the book symbol. Thank you. That is very helpful. Let's make a move. All right. A new day. The game saves automatically at the start of each new day. You can also make a quick save at any time by selecting Save and Quit from the pause menu. You can access the pause menu by clicking on the cog symbol in the upper left corner or by pressing the escape key. All right. So let's start the day. So we only get to go to one place at a time. Let's start by going to the offices. Yeah. Always. Oh. That same. What That's if we fair. Go back to jail? We can't go check on Charlie. That's fine. Uh, let's go see if we have anything to say to. What do you want? I'm JJ Valcone, defense attorney for. I know who you are. I saw you come by earlier, but visiting hours are over. Come back next week. Do you think you could make an exception for us? Visiting hours are over. We'll be quick. I said, visiting hours are over. Do your bird brains understand? Parlez-vous français? I don't think he's going to make an exception, Falcon. All right, let's continue the investigation. All right. So, let's see. This is the... Okay, so that's where... So we're going to talk to the photographer as a witness. And this is the scene of the crime. I, I think it makes sense to start with the crime scene first before we start going after witnesses. Sure. Right? Like, get, get, we don't even have, like, the facts of the, the matter yet. So let, let's go take a look. Falcone and Sparrison enter the courtyard outside Chateau Crenier. People with dirty clothes and gaunt faces linger around the building's shadows. Excusez-moi, messieurs. I don't mean to be a pain, but my little girl and I are sick and starving, see? <coughs> I don't suppose you'd happen to have some spare change? If 20 francs in your wallet, what will you do? Mmm, what will you do? What is the point of the wallet? Yeah, I don't know yet. The thing is, like... My immediate thought is like, was it like, like, is it just going to be like where we sit around and kind of hoard it and not use it for anything? Or is it going to be able to get us stuff later on or that we can't get otherwise? I don't know how much this is going to like my, my gut instinct says this is more ace attorney and that, you know, it's going to be mostly linear, but mm -hmm. clearly we're getting more choices that are a bit more involved. And if we give 10 francs, we won't get 10 francs back. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Is this more like a... Is this more like a telltale scenario where we're going to get the same place no matter where we go, but if you have more resources along the way, you get extra scenes or extra stuff? Hmm. Uh... Fuck it. Yeah. I right, fuck it. Here you go. Stay safe, madame. Oh, wow. Bless you, monsieurs. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty generous of you, Falcon. Times are tough. Making sure mother and child can make it through the last of winter is the least I can do. But what I'm doing sitting here moralizing. Come on, Sparrison. We got business to attend to. <coughs> I'm already regretting doing this voice. Falcon and Sparrison, step it. You got me doing it. Step into the pristine wood paneled foyer of Chateau Crenier. Whoa, look at this place. Baron Rogier must be loaded. More than loaded when it comes to the lucrative investments, the Baron is the legend. Factories, chocolate shops, hotels, railroads, the Baron owns a little bit of everything on this side of the Sien. Is he here right now? Hey, it's the smug looking chap with the impressive mane. But we must approach a man of his stature with tact and finesse. Hey, Baron, we'd like a word. How's that? Sparrison, you have the finesse of an inebriated warthog. Why does Sparrison have hands? Just regular hands? What Why do you does Sparrison have normal hands? Right? What do you think we have behind our back? I thought it was wings until just now. <laughs> you can thank me later. I think I got his attention. Why do they have normal hands? And that's closer. <laughs> Paws are hands. <laughs> wings are not. I see. Did um, I hear my name? 
Great Baron Rolkir, property owner extraordinaire at your service. And who might you fellows be more investigators? Oh! Fascinating. Well, he hired us. He's got no reason to, uh... No. No, he didn't. He didn't. No, he didn't. Um, that's a... We're getting way more questions, way more options than I thought we would, if I'm honest with you. We're attorneys. We're attorneys. Let's not... I don't see any reason to lie about it. Not quite. I'm private attorney J.J. Falcone, and this is my associate, Sparrison. Lawyers, eh? You know, you aren't the first to have passed through here today. Is that so? Yes, yes, this jumpy, twitchy fellow came by this morning, asked a bunch of questions, then hopped away before he heard the answers. Most curious. Hmm. Do you know who he was, Sparrison? Perhaps. I have a hutch, sorry, hunch. We'll be seeing him at the trial. Friend of yours? Something like that. So, what may I do for you, messieurs? Doing some research on Monsieur Grandvi. The frog was killed here on Friday evening. Of course, of course. Such a tragedy. He was a good friend and a loyal business partner. And definitely not killed by me. Oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. suppose That's what they all say. <laughs> I suppose you, messieurs, will be wanting to see the crime scene for yourself. Actually, yes, that'd be fantastic. Well, be my guest. You will find the garden where the murder occurred through the back doors. You may also be interested in the lounge on the second floor, third door to the right. That would be where we gathered for a group photograph prior to the... <sighs> Unfortunate incident. Oh, can we see the finished photograph? I am afraid not. It is to my understanding that a photograph must be developed before it can be viewed. It's a slow process. My own copy of the photograph is to be delivered in three days' time. That's no good to us. The trial may be over by then. Nonetheless, we appreciate your hospitality. Thank you, Baron. It's no trouble at all. I'll be here to see you out when you're done with your investigations. So, where shall we go first? Hmm. Let's start with the garden. Yeah. That's where the murder happened. Dame Caroline says she found Monsieur Grandouille on the stairs by the fountain, so this must be the very spot where the murder took place. Hey, Falcon, do the crime scene investigation thing. The crime scene investigation thing? Yeah. You know, that thing where you get all eagle-eyed and analyze every object in excruciating detail? You mean searching for evidence like a normal person? Yeah, do that. That's not a bad suggestion. Wouldn't be the first time in the Parisian police have missed something right under their noses. <coughs> in investigation mode, you're free to examine the scenery of the room. Click on an item of interest and Falcone will examine it in closer detail. When you've had enough or when you can find nothing else to examine, click X on the top right corner. Alright. Oh, I guess we'll start with the fountain. Fountain's finely crafted, solid carved marble, can't have been cheap. I see another one but water in the bottom of the lower basin. It's a shame we can't see inside the upper basin from here. That would be a perfect place to quickly stash a murder weapon. It's actually not a terrible line of reasoning. We ought to wait in and take a closer look just to be sure. Yeah, I suppose we should. Oh, I apologize. I wasn't being direct enough. What I meant to say was, Sparrison, go wait into the fountain. And then take a closer look at the upper basin. Me? No way. If you want to go waiting, do it yourself. <laughs> Ugh, I'm a respectable lawyer. I can't expect me to roll my trousers and paddle around a fountain like a duck in a lake. Yeah, well, you don't pay me enough to justify getting my sweet thread sweat. Look, there's only one reasonable way to settle this. We'll flip for it. Flip for it? Yep, I'll flip this one franc coin. You call the outcome, get it wrong, and you go for a swim. So what'll it be? Heads or tails? Napoleon face or plant squiggles? Hmm. Plant squiggles. It's called a wreath sparrow. Sure, I'll bet on the plant squig. Why is there a coin with a human face on it? <laughs> I'll bet Every, on the plant squiggles. Everybody knows Napoleon was. Why not are there statues with humans on them? Here I go. It's hats. Should have gone with the old emperor, Falcon. Ah, fine. Hold my shoes. 
Falcon, who really should learn how to spot a rigged coin flip. I almost feel bad for cheating. <laughs> almost. Ah, oh, you're back. Had a good swim? Ugh, I'm a bird, not a fish. Found a mystery item in the upper basin. It's no murder weapon, though. What is this? It's brown and sticky, and it smells weird. Don't tell me that you picked up a... A very wet cigar butt. Possibly belonging to Baron Rogil. Correct. Shouldn't be too surprising. It is his house, after all. Well, let's stash it in the evidence folder, just in case. Ooh. Cigar was found at the bottom of the fountain in Rogil's garden. Rogil's garden. It could only be reached with a little waiting. Okay. Thank you for your time. Is there anything else we need to do here? Can I click on the fountain again? I don't seem to be able to. Statue I can click on. That statue I can click on. That statue I can click on. That statue I can click on. Another beautifully made horse statue. You know, my uncle once had a horse that refused to eat hay. Well, that's unfortunate. Yep. Eventually, we realized that it was just filling up on horse doves. Ugh. Terrible. Oh, the stairs we can look at. Tried blood on the staircase. <clears throat> Must be where Monster Grand Wee died. Do you see any bloody footprints? Oh, oh, or maybe a name scrawled in blood, written with the frog's last breath. What? No, that sounds improbable. Wishful thinking, all I'm seeing here is a big sticky puddle. Nothing to indicate the body was moved for that the frog will have left a last minute clue. Can make out for the bloody message that Monsieur Granui was attacked and killed on the staircase. Alright, well, I mean. It's kind of a weird when that happens, right? It's weird that it always happens in Ace Attorney. Finally crafted ore statue. The main almost looks lifelike. Would you say it behooves you to stroke it? No. No, I would not. Why would it behoove me? <laughs> ben Rogil, Rogil certainly likes horse statues. I don't mind the horse statues, but the little <laughs> cherub people creep me out. Babies should be waddling, not attempting saddleless horseback riding. <laughs> That's a good point. Horse statue? Someone's got a goofy face on it, though. That reminds me of a joke. A horse walks into a bar, and the barkeep says... Why the long face? Yes, we've all heard that one. What? No. The barkeep says, You've got to stop coming here. You're drinking us under the stable. I, uh... It's not raining in the horse jokes. I don't see anywhere else to uh, click on. <coughs> Good golly. Oh, yeah. hmm. My throat is dry today. Let's, uh... Yeah, I think we're good here. I think we're done here. Good call, but are you sure you don't want to take another dip? We still have time. Don't push your luck, Sparrowson. Going back to the main hall for some reason. That'll probably prompt us for... Yeah. Okay. Did you, messieurs, have a good look around? I trust everything was in order. Actually, we haven't seen the lounge where the photograph was taken yet. We should probably do that before we leave. Oh, fair enough. Ah. <laughs> that's that's very good. Second floor, third door on the right. It's supposed to be the room where the photograph was taken. Psst, hey, Falcon, did you see that? See what? That housemaid totally just did something shifty. Shifty? I think she just pocketed something from that drawer. You should totally call her out on it. Excuse me, mademoiselle. Ah, uh, yes, are you two policemen? No, no, we're private attorneys. My name's J.J. Falcone. And I'm Sparrowson. Oh, how rude of me. My name is Cooley Duhal. So, uh, what can I help you messieurs with today? Investigating the murder that took place last week. Do you mind if we ask you a couple questions? That's fine. Let me just grab a chair. That's better. What was <laughs> it you wanted to ask? <laughs> oh. This is where the photograph was taken. We're looking for the room where the photograph was taken prior to the incident. Do you happen to know whether this is the right room? Oh, yes. You're in the right place. 
I saw the photography session for myself. Let's see, the cameraman was standing... Just about where you're standing, actually, Monsieur Falcon. And where's the camera pointed? Right at the clock above the mantelpiece. The Baron insisted on using that very location. Oh, awesome. I wonder if the time of, is going to come into play and we'll be able to prove something with the time of the clock. Yeah. I'm looking at it. Something ain't right about that clock. I know. The painting on it totally clashes with the decor. It's like a more, um, long, more obvious lines. The clock has no hands. Oh, that clock has never had hands in all the years I've worked here. I think Baron Rogil just keeps it around as a conversation piece. Well, we're conversing about it, so I guess it's working. Peculiar detail, though. Make a note of it. Is there something else you wanted to ask? Something we should know. You're a little nervous when we came in. You thought we were police officers. Is there something we ought to know? Anything you need to confess? No, no, I suppose I'm just a little nervous after all the drama of last week. Oh. Huh. Indeed. What do you think? Should we pressure her? I don't know. Or should we ease back on the gas a little bit? I feel like we haven't taken a single fucking risky thing okay. yet. Okay. Let's try. Sure there isn't anything you're hiding. It's okay to tell us. We're defense attorneys. That means we help people get away with criminal acts. That's not... Sparison, we're not going to have a conversation with you. Right, and wait, what? No, that's not an accurate job description, Sparison. It isn't? Oh. What do we do then? <sighs> I'll tell you later. Honestly, messieurs, I have nothing for... I have nothing to hide. Was there something else you wanted to ask? That's all. No further questions. Thank you, mademoiselle. You've been a huge help. It's no problem, messieurs. Actually, there is something. I know you two saw me stealing as you came in. I appreciate that you didn't give me the third degree about it. You see, I'm trying to save up to follow my dreams, and... Well, never mind. I'm rambling. No problem, mademoiselle. To be honest, we have a much larger crime to worry about. I should probably ask. I don't suppose you've been stealing anything else. Silverware, perhaps? Ah, you know about that? Yeah, I suppose that was me. It started with a couple of teaspoons. I didn't think the Baron would miss those. But, uh, well, yeah. I suppose the habit got a little away from me. That's one mystery solved, at least. That's why there was no cutlery at dinner. Yep. yep. I would appreciate it if you didn't tell the Baron. He's been really kind, and I would hate to break his trust. I see. So, where to next, Big Bird? Not giving her the third degree. Didn't we give her the third degree about it? We pressured her about it. <laughs> All right. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a good look, thank you, Baron, but we actually have some questions for you. Please, ask away. I have nothing to hide. Never, uh, thought you did. About your housemaid. Is that going to involve us incriminate? Because I don't want to be that person. Yeah. What happened on the night of the murder? Ben Rogil, I'd like to ask about your activities on the night of the murder. Oh, ho. Huh. Am I in trouble? Not at all. Why would you tell someone, yeah, you're in trouble? Oh, nothing like that. We're gathering the full picture. I see. Well, let me think. The guests arrived at five o'clock, and we all sat down for dinner in this very hall at six. That part went magnificently. The photographer arrived at seven o'clock, but it wasn't until 7.30 that we had our picture taken. My housemaid discovered the crime scene soon after that. I see. Is there something else I can help you messieurs with? Nah, we ain't gonna throw her under the bus. All right. That'll be all, Baron. Thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure. Have a delightful day, messieurs. Did you get all the information you needed, Falcon? I sure hope so. Don't worry. If everything goes wrong in the trial, we could always just... wing it. Terrible. Just terrible. Let's head back to the office and get some rest. Wing it, my ass.
This is moving at a pretty quick clip. Yeah, let's go to the studio. I get, there's no, there's been no point in revisiting places so far, so. Let me guess, this guy's a frog. This is the studio of the famous photographer. Shall we, uh, shall we knock? Wait, there's a note on the door. Okay. <clears throat> the magnificent and marvelous artist, Monsieur Robitio de Robinho, is currently out on an artistic expedition. He shall return when his muse sees fit. When his muse sees fit? What does that even mean? I think it means that he is a pretentious bird brain. But in any case, the artist seems to be out. Glad we wasted an entire day of investigation on this. What shall we do now? Uh. Knock anyway. Should knock anyway. All right, I don't see the harm. Nope. It doesn't look like he's in Falcon. Huh. I'm wondering, can we get in a position where we don't have enough evidence for the trial now? Let's break in. Let's do some crimes. Crimes, 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 crimes. We should, uh, we should break in. What? Are you serious? Maybe. Monsieur J.J. Falcon. I... Wait. J.J. Falcon. Ugh. I would have thought that a man of justice like yourself would be against such reckless displays of unlawful barbarism. You're right, I'm sorry, I don't know what came over. It's a brilliant suggestion. Stand back, I'm barging the door down. <laughs> well, just like that, shouldn't we discuss it first? <laughs> huh? What in bird Jesus' name was that? You said you wanted to break in. I thought we'd find an open window. I didn't think you'd turn into a bird-sized cannonball. Now we're here. We ought to make the most of it. The place is so quite something. It's very, uh... <laughs> yeah, that does sound like Camille Saison, doesn't it? I know exactly one piece by, by him, but this sounds... And it's this one. Yeah. Uh, swanky. I was gonna say ostentatious. That's just swanky talk for swanky. We don't have time for this. The son of a door being smashed and could be drawing unwanted attention. To find anything that can help our case and get out. Remind me why we did this? To get evidence. All right, so there's a door over there. Some two portraits, three portraits. See painting style. I'm not quite sure what the clear liquid in the bottle is. I could taste test it. You could, but we don't have time for a hospital visit right now, so let's not. Okay. Beautiful picture of the Paris skyline. Given the angle, must have been taken from Notre Dame Cathedral itself. It's a photograph of the castle somewhere in the countryside. You know, I once had an uncle who fell off a castle rampart while on guard duty. I'm sorry to hear that. Did he die? No. He got demoted. Ugh. Terrible. Just terrible you are picture of a fence it's a fancy photograph it leaves the viewer defenseless out of all the pictures here i would pick it as my favorite okay i'm done okay no i'm done no more fence puns <laughs> enough of you oh we got more stuff to oh wow we can look at all the portraits let's let's a chandelier whoops a chandelier you should get one of those for the office oh the money for that sort of luxury finally dressed dandy fellow up on a horse Lighthouse? No, wait a minute, top hat. Actually, if I squint and turn my head sideways. It's a black smudge, Falcon. <laughs> Picture of a sailing ship on a windy day. All right. Is that the last thing to look at here? Seems to be. Hey, Falcon, look. Oh, it's just an easel. No, no, look what's on the easel. Oh, well, this must be a copy of the photograph from the evening of the murder. Okay. So, let's see. Oh, not evidence. Got Caterline. Vertically enabled, enabled housemaid. housemaid. So the maid was in the photograph. Yeah. That's interesting. And, then and, and the dame's father. Pour toi. Hmm, okay. 
A copy of the photograph of the evening of the murder. No question about it. I see a housemaid, Dame Caroline. I think that's Signor Portois, Caroline's father. So, what shall we do? Do we just take this? I don't think we can use it if we take it. Right? Because if we bring out evidence in the court of law, they're going to be like, where the hell did you get that? Strong emoji. Ooh, woo. I, I found it. Finders keepers. I... We should take it. Should we take it? <laughs> should we take it? And not use it, or should we just leave it? We're already breaking and entering. What's a bit of larceny between friends? <laughs> Come as far as may as well borrow it. Is there anything else we need to do here? I don't see anything else to interact with. Oh. See a bourgeois tigress in profile. It's interesting. We have very little evidence. I don't feel like I have any picture of what's going on. No, it'll be interesting to see what the case is that's brought before her, though. That's the thing. It was like Ace Attorney. You usually don't have like an idea of what actually happened beforehand. You have to base it off like what your the case against your client is. We're not stooping. Let's get out of here before we draw further attention to ourselves. Sounds good to me. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, mon dieu! What happened to my door? Uh. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. We're already criminals. Yeah. Let's Kids little did it, little weasel types. We saw them. Yeah, weasels. They were all like, let's break into this art guy's house. And we were like, no, weasels, you cannot do that because that would be illegal. And then they were like, chase them off. That's the important thing. Well, uh, thank you, I suppose. We can move Shroud is approaching fast. Right, let's go. You know what? I wonder if stealing it means it no longer gets brought up in the court by... And it can no longer be brought up in court in their defense. This is weird. I don't know how to feel about this. I thought I had an idea what to expect and, and my expectations are being thrown off. Falcone and Sparrowson stand inside the marble portico of the Palais de Justice. Ju justice? Palais de Justice. Justice? Palace of Justice awaiting the opening tribunal of the Tribunal de Grand Instance. Are you nervous, Falcon? Yeah. Of course I'm nervous. We're woefully underprepared for this case. Two days! We only had two days to prepare. How are we expected to get anything done in that time frame? Calm your feathers, Falcon. We can do this. Ah! Monsieur Falcon, Petit Sparrowson. Is there anything you need me to do? Uh, no, no, we gotta handle on things. Uh, Falcon was just telling me how confident he was feeling about the case. Oh, that's just wonderful. I know you two will pull through. Let's move it along, fellas. I'll be watching from inside. Do your best for me, Monsieur Falcon. We will. Are we ready? Yeah, we're ready. Wow, we're already at trial. Judge Maxime. <laughs> all right, all right, settle down, everyone. Is everybody here? Why am I only doing voices that scratch my throat today? What the hell? J.D. Falcon, present. Fence is ready, Your Honor. Ah, uh, um, uh, Rupert Rabington, present. The ready is prosecution, Your Honor. Oh, uh, darn, that's not it. Oh, gosh, where are my notes? Uh, I knew it. I knew what? Rupert and I went to Paris Law School together. He was in all of my classes. Oh, was he, uh, smart? Uh, no. He always scored the second worst marks in the class. Sparison. Who scored the worst marks in your class? No comment. I can only assume that he bumbled through the final exams on the luck of his two rabbits' feet. Unless he's improved considerably, you might already have this trial in the back. No, but, uh, say, Sparrowson, if Rupert scored the second lowest marks of the class, then who scored the lowest? I choose to exercise my right to not self-incriminate. I'm glad we have their vibe nailed. We yeah. improv yeah. that bit and then it happens <laughs> verbatim. 
Ah, uh, here it is. Uh, have, uh, <clears throat> uh, the prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Oh, is the jury all pleasant? <laughs> oh, per- ah. oh. All oh, president account for your honor. <laughs> hey, Falcone, I thought there were only six members of the jury for cases like this. Why do I count eight? The steel birds with funny hats are our sewers, the associate judges. Everything seems to be in order, so let us begin. The court is now in session for the trial of Dean Cataline de Miao. Prosecution, please call your first witness to the stand. Oh, gosh, are we there already? Okay, uh... I choose to call the officer in charge of the murder investigation, Inspector Valerdi, to the witness stand. Inspector Valerdi, please approach the stand and recite the oath. As you will, Your Honor, I swear to speak without hatred and without fear, to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Uh, Monsieur, no, uh, Inspector, please state your uh, name and occupation for the record. My name is Inspector Just Volerti. I am a servant to the law, a scourge of the gutter rats that plague this city. I have enforced the law for over 20 years, and I shall continue until I bring the infamous Viridian Killer to justice. To justice. My path begins 18 years ago. Let's stick to the questions, Inspector. Of course, Your Honor. Oh, great. I was hoping we could have one of those bumbling, cuddly officers, but instead we're stuck with lawful goody two-shoes. I bet this guy would turn in his own mother if he saw her littering. So, uh, Inspector, is it true that you are the lead investigator on this case? That is correct. I was also among the first to arrive at the scene of the crime. Then, perhaps you can walk us through what you witnessed upon your arrival. Absolutely. Just after 7.30, we were alerted and brought to the scene by the housemaid of Baron Rogier. At the scene of the crime, we found Dame Catherine de Miao. So wait, the housemaid alerted them? Yeah. Okay. She was standing over the corpse of Monsieur Grandoui with his blood on her paws. Well, that sounds like an open and shut case in my humble opinion. No, uh, no more questions, Your Honor. Bloody paws! No one told me that detail! Keep it together, Falcon. You're about to be given the opportunity to cross-examine the witness. That's your opportunity to find flaws in the inspector's testimony. Of course, I know this. You may begin your cross-examination, Monsieur Falcon. Cross-examine the witness to find flaws in his testimony. Select a key phrase that you find suspicious, and Falcon will press the witness for information. Ask the right questions to bring the truth to light. Avoid pressing for pointless details. The judge and jury don't like having their time wasted. Okay, so we won't just be pressing around like we would. The blood on the paws is the bloody rare steak with no utensils, so maybe it's that that we're supposed to press on. Alerted and brought to the scene by the housemaid. I also want to know about that scene of the crime. Sliced open corpse. Sliced open with what? There was no... If no one had any knives around. Mm. Except for the housemaid. These all seem important to me. I want to know more about each of these, actually. Okay. Especially you say Dame Caroline had blood on her paws. Correct. Blood clung to her fur like guilt to a convict. Whose blood was it? Whose blood was it? Ha! Huh. What a question. It was Monsieur Grandoui's, of course. How can you be so sure? Um, uh, I object. This line of questioning is absurd. There was only one murder victim that night, Falcon. The blood on Dame Caroline's paws could only have been longed to one person, Monsieur Grandoui. Oh, right, 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 because we're, we're, we're trying to... We're... The idea isn't to press around and find more information. The idea is, like, to specifically... Sometimes in Ace Attorney, you just press around, get some info, and then move on to the next one. They're, like, they specifically want us to, like, go for the throat here. That's what we'll do. Judge, Judge, Falcone's trying to delay the trial by asking pointless questions. I'm afraid the prosecution may have a point, Monsieur Falcone. Do you have any reason to suspect the blood belonged to someone other than Monsieur Granoui? We do. 
I, uh, I do, Your Honor. I have more than suspicion of evidence the blood on Dame Catiline's paws had nothing to do with the murder. This is foolish time-wasting, uh, Falcon. If the blood on Dame Caroline's paws didn't come from the victim, then where did the blood come from? On the evening of the murder, Dame Caroline ate a bloody wear steak. Is this true, Miss Monsieur Rabbington? Um, well, I, um, in a manner of, uh, speaking, I suppose steak may have been on the, uh, menu. Inspector, would you know it's a possibility the blood of the lady's paws did not belong to the victim, but to the steak? Well, wait, uh, don't uh, answer that, Inspector. It is a possibility. No. Oh. Intriguing. We gained a little favor with the jerk. We gained favor and lose favor? I see. Oh, shice. Okay. So, Inspector Valeria, is it possible you arrested an innocent bystander simply for being a messy eater? Now, hold on just one minute, Falcon. You are overlooking something quite crucial. Dame Caterline is an elegant bourgeois kitten. She was no doubt brought up with a flawless etiquette and a perfect table manners. At the banquet, she would have eaten the steak with a fork in her left hand and a knife in her right, like any proper civilized animal. How could she have possibly gotten blood on her paws with such good manners? Do we have something about the absence yeah. of... Right. Okay. Yeah. That. That was like. Do we have the absence of silverware in our e evidence? It's a good question. At least it would be at any other ordinary dinner banquet. But as it happened, something was missing from that particular banquet. Something that forced Dame Caroline to eat with her paws. Dame Caroline was forced to eat steak with her paws because the silverware of the household had been previously stolen. Stolen? I don't recall any mention of that in the police report. We weren't aware of anything missing from the Rogil residence when we performed the initial investigation. But as it happened, Baron Rogil approached us about this very subject last night. <laughs> ah! What a twist. Oh, hey, what a twist. <laughs> Gain a little favor. What is the meaning of all this? Bloody steak. Misplaced silverware. Inspector, what was your investigation so lax that you overlooked these basic facts in your initial report? Lax. My investigation. Judge, I assure you I am the most thorough investigative officer on the force. Then it is amazing that the Parisian police managed to solve any crimes at all. <laughs> oh, dear. Be on your way, Inspector. Perhaps do a little inspecting for your next case. Fine. So be it. Messieurs, until next time. Adieu. Prosecutor, trust your next witness is ready. Yes, yes, of course, Your Honor. I call upon, uh, let's see, Monsieur Robitio Robinio, the uh, photographer who attended the banquet on the night of the murder. Monsieur Robitio Robinio, please approach the stand and recite the oath. Oh, uh, how does it go? I swear to speak without hatred and without fear, to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. A little cliche, to be perfectly honest. Could the, uh, witness please introduce himself for the, uh, court record? Well, as if anybody in this courtroom does not immediately recognize me. And the great, uh, Monsieur Robitio Robinho, cutting-edge photographer, visionary. I don't just take people's pictures, I capture their very essence. Je suis l'artiste, uh, tu es une pipe. You are a pipe. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I may have seen my works in hit magazines like, uh, Le Branche or Se Chouet. I could send you tweets if you like. What on earth is a tweet? Bird to bird communication. Come on, Falcon. It's the 11th century. 19th century. Ele How did you get 11th out of that? <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking about medieval stuff. <laughs> get with the times already. <laughs> the game that we're playing set in medieval times isn't even set in that. I know, right? There's so much wrong with that. Uh, yes, yes, your works are very, um, impressive, Monsieur Robinio, but let's get down to business. Could you, uh, tell us your, uh, activities were on the night of the murder? Oh, I'm very still, well. I'm still annoyed that I thought from the name Robitio Robinio that it was going to be like Ribbit and he was going to be a frogman. No. Nope. But no, it's just another bird. Sorry, no frogman for you. Other huh? than the dead Mr. The dead toad. One, yeah. That's a toad, not a frog. Very well, it's hired by uh, Baron Rogil to capture the evening's events. 
I just up in the evening, point my camera, capture the beauty of the banquet in one fantastic photograph. Then I uh, build Baron Rogriel and left. Like a true artist. And uh, with regards to the photograph itself, who did you photograph? Well, you might ask about a copy so you can all see for yourselves. Oh, very good. Let's take a closer look. So we'd get to see it anyway. No, that's a different photograph. It is a different photograph. Whoa. What? Huh? Uh-huh. 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 There's no hands on the clock, so we can't prove what time it is. Was this photo meant to prove that at the time of the photograph, he couldn't have done it because he was here in the picture and not out doing murders, when in fact, at the time of the photograph, he wasn't here and the little miss was? That's... Fascinating. My word. Why, why would even there be... So you took two photographs, clearly. Yeah. My word, this is an exquisite picture, isn't it? So let's see. Who do we have here? Borrowed. Nice. Right. Oh, in, in the middle, we have... Oh, that's right. In the middle, we see uh, Baron Wargiel, the lion who hosted the event. On the left, we see uh, Seigneur Poitrois de Miao, the father of the defendant, Dame Caterline. And finally, we see the, uh, the housemate, Kuleen Du Ho, who I suspect may have snuck into the picture uninvited. As you can see, two people are clearly absent from the photograph. The first is the victim, Monsieur Granwy. The second is the defendant, Dame Caterline de Miao. Quite suspicious, wouldn't you agree? Just a moment, Monsieur Rabington, this proves nothing. Defendant and the victim were not photographed with the others. That doesn't mean they weren't in the garden together at one point. Hold your horses, Falcon. I'm not done yet. Prosecution may continue. Oh, there are hands on the clock in yeah. that picture. Yeah! Ah, 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 ah. Behind the photograph subjects, we see a wall clock with the time set at uh, 7.30. Now, why is that time significant? Well, as Inspector Volerdi told us earlier, that was the exact time the murder took place. Do you see, Falcon? Every suspect has an alibi at the time of the murder, save for Dame Caterline herself. So you doctored the photograph. You killed him, Robitio. Robitio, you killed the man. <laughs> Why would you do it? Is it because he wasn't a? Is it because you didn't get to be a frog? Is that it? <laughs> hey, Falcon, that photograph doesn't seem right. It looks different to the one we borrowed from Robinio's studio. I see it too. Our photograph shows Colleen Duhart, Dame Caroline, and Signor Protoir. But Monsieur Robinio's photograph shows Baron Rorgil, where Dame Caroline should be standing. Seems the only one photograph was taken. This demonstrates that one of the photographs must have been edited in some way. You should just slam that evidence down. Be like, bam, inconsistency. This whole courtroom is out of order. Case closed. Can't do that. Well, I suppose you could be a little more delicate with your words. I mean, I can't do that because our evidence was illegally obtained. If I were to present it, Monsieur Robinho would ask how we acquired it, and the whole trial could derail. Worst case scenario, I could lose my legal license and we would be arrested for theft. Oh, well, we don't want that. I was wondering if that was going to... I was going to be like, is there a way we can do this without, you know, showing our hand that we have it? Because I don't want to get caught for... Don't, I should tread lightly. Your Honor, I would like to cross-examine the witness. Very well, the defense may proceed. Hmm. It's a waste of time, if you ask me. Photographs are rock-solid evidence. Photoshop hasn't been invented yet. So we're going to question the hands on the clock, right? Yeah. Okay. 7 p.m. Wait. 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 We don't have the option to. But we can look at the photograph. What's in our evidence? What's in our evidence? The evidence... We do have evidence that points towards the clock having no hands. So we will be... like, And I think we want to press the photograph is what we want to press here. Okay. Because we don't care about the camera. This is the camera. 7 p.m. No reason to assume otherwise. Build. That's fine. I think it, the photograph is what we're looking at here. Sicko goes to look at this photograph. Uh. 
I see a mistake. Just clarify, Monsieur Rabinio, the photographs are for direct reflection of reality, are they not? Well, that's a correct photographic process. Leaves no room for bias or inaccuracies. That's, uh, it's most curious, because, uh, I see a mistake here. A mistake? Impossible! I just told you, Monsieur, the camera's perfect, unbiased evidence. The photographs it produces are flawless. Falcone, I'm not, uh, seeing any, uh, mistakes. Perhaps you could be more specific. Certainly. The clock. Clock. Clock of this photograph. Something not right about it. Hmm, well, isn't that convenient? The defense sees something wrong with the, uh, key piece of evidence that implicates his client. Think about that. Think about that for just a moment and let me know what you come up with, all right? <laughs> Why would that? <laughs> Don't give me that cocky tone, Monsieur Rabington. I have evidence that there's something wrong with the clock in that picture. Yeah. Photograph clearly shows the clock's hands pointing at seven and six. Not much is self-evident. Just curious, because the clock in the larger Chateau Crenier has no hands. It... It has no hands. Box is merely a decorative piece, a talking item. Feel free to ask Baron Rorgil or his housemate if you have doubts. Monsieur Robinho, how do you explain this discrepancy? I don't know. There must oh. be some... Oh. I don't know, man. There must be some sort of mistake, dude. My, my camera's flawless. I don't know why I'm Larry Butts all of a sudden, <laughs> but I guess this is where we're going with this. <laughs> There's no mistake. Monsieur, your photograph depicts something that does not exist in the real world. Oh, maybe there was an error in the printing process. An error precisely where the clock's hand should be. Please, Monsieur, do not patronize us. Let me patronize. Patronize. Patronize means something different. Patronize. Let me know for a more plausible explanation. You, Monsieur Robinho, edited this photograph. Edited. No expert, but I suspect you used paint or ink to carefully put hands upon the clock. A simple task considering the clock face was bare. Okay, if you speculate, you simply choose, specifically chose to include a handless clock in the photograph just to simplify the editing process. Hi! Falcone, your reasoning is absurd. Why would the witness do such a thing? Is it not obvious? Showing the photographs that have taken place at precisely 7.30, it clears all the photographs subjects of suspicion. In other words, Monsieur Robinho created a perfect alibi. Ah! Uh. Ah! Uh. Of course, this raises further questions. Who's the witness protecting? And why was Monsieur why was Monsieur Robinho coerced, bribed, threatened? And if silence is some answers, Monsieur Robinho. Oh, finding guilt me, I'm I got me, I'm guilty, I did it all. What? You did it? You're confessing to the murder of Monsieur Granoui? What? No, no, man, I have no idea who killed the frog. I'm just admitting I'm guilty of producing fraudulent photographs, man. I was ordered to make some changes to printed photographs and I included adding the hands to a clock. You ordered by whom? Obviously the Baron. The one who built him. Or yeah. he built, right? I dare not say. Monsieur Robinho, I strongly advise you to answer the defense's question. You've pledged to speak without fear, after all. Oh, uh, with respect, Judge, I fear his claws more than I fear the punishment of the justice system. I shall name no names. His claws? Did you hear that, Falcone? That's most unfortunate. Monsieur Robinho, we cannot, we cannot and shall not torture names out of you. We do not live under the ancient regime, after all. Ancient regime, after all. And since you have admitted to falsifying evidence, then we cannot keep you on the stand as a witness. Take your leave. You be shall be charged with perjury in due course. I can't protest. This is the least I deserve for my failure as an artist. Good day, messieurs. Later. Oh. Intriguing. You getting a little favor with the jury. Yeah, we're doing a good job. So, uh, the clock's hands were painted on. So what? It doesn't matter. The po photograph still depicts Dame Caterline as absent close to the time of the murder. That's significant. Don't be dense, Monsieur Rabington. If the photograph is not completely genuine, then it cannot be considered reliable evidence. Why not? It's still a portrayal of the uh, night's events. Because if we accept that one part of the picture was edited, we must accept the possibility the other parts were too. It's possible that Dame Caterline was painted out. Even worse, it's possible another person was painted in. We know the witness was trying to cover for someone, so all possibilities must be accounted for. So, what are you saying, Falcone, that the housemaid paid off the photographer? Or was it Seigneur Portois de Miao, perhaps? I don't think so. The housemaid lacks means or motive, and it wouldn't make sense for Seigneur Portois to implicate his own daughter. Well, surely you're not suggesting that the honest and beloved Baron Rorgil deliberately tried to frame Dame Caterline, Because that would be the most outlandish theory yet. 
The Baron is a pillar of our community. He would never do such a thing. Monsieur Rabbiton, I'm not here to throw accusations. That's the job of you, the prosecutor. However, mayhaps I should offer my opinion. Baron, it's not a time for your witness testimony yet. I like how they really have to like, it's not my job to do it. I just got to prove our guy didn't do <laughs> it. <laughs> so you would think, prosecutor, and yet I see my good reputation getting tarnished by your incompetence. I I I incompetence? Indeed, let us proceed with witness questioning. Is that fine with you, judge? Yes, I suppose that's fine. Very good, and I trust that the defense has no objections. No objections here, buddy. Fantastic. Oh, but before I forget, I pledge to speak without fear and prejudice, etc., etc. Now, prosecutor, ask me about what I witnessed over the course of the evening. Oh, uh, okay. Baron Walgiel, um, on the night of, uh, the night the... The initial dinner went magnificently. When the photographer arrived... Monsieur Grandoui left to visit the garden. Dame Caterline followed behind him moments later. Dame Caterline? <laughs> We're calling her Caterline. <laughs> Signor Pourtois, Monsieur Robinho, and myself were engaged in conversation, so we paid her no mind. Sparison, what is he saying? What are these words coming out of this guy's mouth here? I don't understand this. <laughs> After the photographer had left, my housemaid left to go find Monsieur Grandoui and Dame Caterline. That would be when I heard her cry for help. Thank you, Baron. I think we all know the story from there. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, though. Do you doubt my integrity, Garçon? I'm just uh, on here to cover the truth, Baron. Very well, then. Hit me with your best shot. Let us establish with absolute certainty that I, what? Baron Roquil, am an honest man. Why did you sound weird when you said that? <laughs> Why did it sound really weird when he said that? <laughs> Defense may proceed with the cross-examination. All right. What statements can we question? The dinner went magnificently. When the photographer arrived, Monsieur Grandoui left to visit the garden... Dame Catterline followed behind him a few moments later. My housemate discovered the pair just after the photographer left and called for help. And what do we got in evidence? We have the cigar. Is that good enough? Found at the bottom of the fountain, Rorgio's garden could only be reached with a little waiting. Let's press on the garden, and then maybe we can present the cigar. Yeah, that's the only real thing we had. The red herring. Eh, nice. Dame Catterline had her bloody rare steak. The yeah, I guess that's the best thing we have. The only other thing that comes to mind is maybe like, oh, when the dinner went well, I'm like, did it go well? You didn't have, <laughs> you didn't have silverware. Can that, but that's, yeah, I think. Baron, we saw the murder scene in your garden for ourselves. When was the last time you visited it? Baron Rodgio, when's the last time you ventured into your own garden? There we go. Ha 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 ha! We got you, you some bitch. As it happens, I have quite serious allergies. I haven't been in my own garden for years. Years, you say? Indeed. It's That's not, not right, my friend. Baron, I do not wish to call you a liar, but that claim does not hold up to scrutiny. Oh, and why is that? Because we have hard evidence you visited the garden recently, that's why. Balderdash, my word is gold. Show the court this so-called hard evidence that I've been in my garden. This was found in your garden. To be specific, it was found inside the fountain basin, right beside where the murder occurred. Uh, cigar butt? That, uh, that, um, could, that could belong to anybody, and, uh... Prosecutor, please shut your mouth. I can speak for myself. Uh, okay. Sorry, Baron. That is indeed the remnants of one of my cigars, but I must apologize, Monsieur Falcon, for I misunderstood your initial question. You see, prior to the banquet, I hadn't visited my own garden in years. But naturally, after hearing the housemaid's cry for help on the evening of the murder, I rushed outside. I was shocked and disgusted by what I saw. That must have been when I dropped my half-smoked cigar in the fountain basin. 
dropped. We had to fucking wade to get there, my yeah. friend. You see, Falcone, there's a perfectly reasonable explanation. Find that believable if the cigar were actually discarded. As it happened, the cigar boat was found in the fountain's upper basin, a location that could only be accessed with great inconvenience. And a little paddling. Cigar butt was not dropped. It was deliberately hidden. There are any number of possible explanations. Are there? Because I can only think of one, buddy. That is you, Baron Rurgil. Deliberately hid your cigar butt to disguise your own illicit activities. Did I now? And what illicit activities would those be? I'm gonna spell it out? Fine. Here, let's put everything on the table. You, Baron Rurgil, murdered Monsieur Gronwy. Oh my god, he got me doing it. <laughs> you murdered, um... Monsieur Granwy. <laughs> That's where you were trying to keep hidden. Directly accusing me of murder. How shamelessly brazen. <laughs> <coughs> You're right. That is a ludicrous accusation, Falcone. The Baron is an upstanding citizen of the highest order. Your allegation is baseless. You have no evidence, no uh, means, motive, or opportunity. No evidence? Thank God, Monsignor Rabbington. Every piece of evidence points to Baron Rorgil as the prime suspect. What the means? The Baron currently had the me certainly has the means. His lion's claws are sharp as a surgeon's blade. Getting a frog belly would be trivial to him. Even Monsieur Robinho confessed just moments ago that he feared his claws. Ridiculous. I would never threaten the man with violence. What a motive? The Baron had at least 10,000 francs worth of motive. Removing a business partner, the Baron's share of his railway company would be increased from one third to one half. This is preposterous. And finally, the Baron had an opportunity. No, he crafted the perfect opportunity. He arranged a small banquet with a very select number of guests. He wore the missing silverware, and yet he served steak, a food item that necessitates good cutlery. Why? To bloody the hands of his guests, of course. And he hired an easily influenced photographer and staged a very specific picture in order to build a perfect alibi for himself. The photographer and the guests in the front handled his clock to make for easy editing is quite an ingenious plan, it must be said. Prosecutor, are you just going to let this slanderous yarn go uncontested? Say something. Object. I, uh, um... Uh, oh, you're pitifully useless. After executing the murder, the Baron found himself still holding a single piece of incriminatory evidence as finished cigar. He knew living the crimes he would raise suspicion, but he didn't have time to properly dispose of it, so... In a desperation, he threw it into his fountain out of the sight of his guests and any snooping police. Imagine the Baron was hoping to implicate Signor Portois de Miao, since that would ensure total control over his railway company. Our last name, Catalina, was the first to happen upon the crime scene, so the Baron improvised. I don't know why this is my voice now. <laughs> this is an outrage. Judge, I demand that you disbar this ranting lunatic. No, there's only one outrage here. And that is a man like yourself is able to abuse his wealth and status to frame an innocent girl for murder. You're a bourgeois of the worst kind, my friend. How dare you, Garçon! The utter nerve for a lying scumbag of a lawyer to accuse a philanthropist like myself of something so heinous. I'm nothing like the fat cat bourgeois. I'm a respectable, hard-working capitalist. <laughs> no, you're a ruthless man who would slaughter a dear friend just to reap a few francs. You incredulous whelp. I ought to gut you right here and now, like, like, like a damned frog. You want to you wanna run that one by me again? Not just me. You want to run that by those eight, five folks sitting over on the bench over there? <laughs> I'm sure they got something uh, interesting to say about that. Uh, How about you, Rabbington? Got anything, got, you, you got anything, rabbit, rabbit boy? Could, the prosecution rests its case. <laughs> could someone please restrain the Baron? I'm on it, Your Honor. Let's go, old man, to the conciergerie with you. Don't touch me, you filthy jackdaw. I can walk myself. This is uh, quite a ton of events. Prosecution have anything to add? I, uh, well, in a manner of um, speaking, uh, uh, well, to be honest, uh, no. Then I shall now confer with the members of the jury to come to a decision. As the animals of the court, please be patient in this time. Falcone, that was pretty incredible. Yeah, thank you, buddy. Hope it was enough. What do you mean? You just proved Catherine's innocent. We'll get a not guilty verdict for sure. Uh, Sparrowson, I think you misunderstood something important about the justice system. What's that? I ain't proved shit. As lawyers, we can't deal in proofs. It's just not possible. All we can do is organize the evidence, convincingly explain what it suggests. I ain't proved Dame Catherine's innocence. 
All tones demonstrate that there's a significant possibility that she's not guilty. I'm not sure that I understand the difference. We have reached a decision. Light of recent revelations clear that an error of judgment was made with the initial arrest. On that note, we unanimously find the defendant, Dame Catiline de Miao, to be not guilty. Not guilty. Oh, they did the thing. Hell yeah. <laughs> but no confetti. No conf- I mean, that would be extra. Oh, Monsieur Falcon, Petit Sparrowson, you did it. I suppose we did, didn't we? I don't know why my voice settled down here, but this word's going to stay. <laughs> <laughs> we should head back to the office so we can celebrate properly. Oh, hell yeah. You did it, Falcon. Can't take all the credit. This was a groupie achievement right here. I'm so proud of you both. I'll go get one bottle of wine and three of our least dirty glasses. You were amazing, Monsieur Falcon. Nah, it was nothing. I very much like the way you pinned the motor on the bear, and that was an act of sheer genius. Well, uh, I uh, didn't pin anything. The person and I just worked at unveiling the truth, given the facts of the case. Oh, Monsieur Falcon, there's no need to play coy. The case is over. Play coy? Don't tell me you're actually being sincere. I'm, uh, I'm completely lost. Oh, wow. I thought the whole goody-goody thing was an act, but you actually do not know. All right, I'll spell it out for you. Ha <laughs> ha! Really? I murdered Monsieur Granoui. I saw him in the garden hall, drunk and vulnerable, and I seized my opportunity. Nothing personal, it was just business, you understand? Business, huh? To increase my papa's share in the train company, of course. My papa always said the drunk old frau was the weakest link. Your, uh, confession doesn't make any sense at all. I found Baron Rule Gill's cigar button hidden in the garden. Oh, I put that there. I expected the police to find it, but I suppose that was putting too much faith in the bearings of Paris finest. But Falcone proved that Monsieur Robinio's photograph was edited. It was edited. I wasn't in the picture because I was busy playing a visit to Monsieur Gronwy in the garden. My papa knew I needed an alibi, so he ordered Monsieur Robinho to paint me over Baron Rogil and to add hands to the clock. Idiots didn't manage to finish altering either photograph by trial day. It's a good thing that Monsieur Falcon was so imaginative, because that could have gone very badly. So, the one we stole was further altered. Both of them wow. were wrong. Holy shit. I'm going to need a moment. Uh... What's with the silence? You should both be proud. There aren't many lawyers in the whole of France who would have won a case like this, even for a bourgeoisie kitty like me. I think you should leave. Huh. Fine, so much for the celebrations. Here's the payment for your services straight from my papa's pockets. Well, adieu, Monsieur Falco. Adieu, Petite Sparrowson. We only got 40 francs for that whole thing. Damn. You know what? I'll take that drink. Uh, Falcon, what do we do now? Falcon. Wow, what a twist. End of act one. Game Holy has been shit. saved. I think that's a good place to end it. Yeah. I think that is really, if anything, that has kind of whetted my appetite to play more of this. Oh, yeah. I I, I like that it it made us be wrong. I didn't expect that. I expected it to be straight Phoenix, I, right? I, and... I very much appreciate how it calls attention to the specific um, idiosyncrasies of Ace Attorney games as well. Like you're not proving shit. You're yeah. Like it's it's like no, your actual job is just to get your is just to defend your client, which is in like in Ace Attorney, it's it's different because it's like it's a game, right? You know, that's part of it. They want you to solve the whole mystery. This is like no, it's just your job, just, just, just doing your thing, and you can be wrong. So what do we think's next? I, I, I'm putting my cards on the table. I think we'll have to defend the Baron. Oh, that would be hilarious. That so would be... I just got you put in jail. Want my help to get back out? What a lucrative business opportunity that is. <laughs> well, well. Love to see what happens uh, next, next time? time. And just a reminder, uh, next time is going to be in like a week or two because we're going to finish off Misericord Volume 1 first. Uh, but then we will come back. We'll play more of this game because I am having a good time with this.
Uh, <sighs> until then, sound off in the comments about whose friend she is less worse amongst the two of us. I wasn't even trying. I don't feel like it's a... <laughs> sure. Sh- sure. <laughs> Thank you once again to all of our fine patrons for supporting us another month. Your support means the entire world to us. <laughs> because of people like you that we get to keep fine games to play on the channel as well as update our equipment every so often. And boy, do we appreciate that. I don't know why I'm committing to this bitch. I don't know either, <laughs> but it's great. We love to give a super special shout out to the patrons. I don't know. I'm jacked in to you, which I do not understand the meaning of, including the fine Alice. The fighting doll. And Snow Flurry. If you want to support us at patreon.com slash 8PR, you can do so. And all the money we make from that goes back into making our channel bigger and better. We greatly appreciate it. You also get access to exclusive episodes of Tuquia's Play, like the Patreon Potpourri. Month before it goes available on the main channel. I believe you mean Patreon? The Patreon Potpourri. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. Oh, God. That makes me want... No, no, no. no, We're not... No, no, no. no. Stop, Stop this. Stop this. Smash, smash, smash that like, comment and subscribe, comment and subscribe.